How you feeling? Injury free. Yep. Hey. Beautiful day. Uh, the guys competed, right? So you want you don't want this to look like a practice, even though early on we got some work done in special teams and some short yardage stuff. But uh, I thought the quarterbacks, um, you know, were sharp. Um, you know, I thought defensively we had some guys making plays. So, you know, when you try to evaluate a spring game, um, you know, you want to stay healthy and you want to look sharp in the areas. And I thought we did. Yeah, I would say probably one of the smoothest games I've seen and very efficient on both sides. Goes to all the work you guys have done building that culture. What's next now for this team over the next few months? Well, look, first of all, these guys got to get academically their work done, all of that. But we still have a couple of weeks before we go into discretionary time. So they'll have some work in the weight room. And then, the, then it's active rest for May and then get after it in June. So, you know, as I told them, no longer are we going to sneak up on anybody. Um, you know, we're the SEC uh, West champs. So um, and everybody now is is got their eye towards LSU. So um, make sure you take that into your training. Which one thing that I know you were looking at coming in was the secondary. Got a lot of work today against two talented quarterbacks. How would you feel about their performance? You know, I thought the corners were, were really good. I mean, look, we've got outstanding receivers, so it's iron sharpening iron out there. we got to tackle better at the safety position, and that's that's an area that we're going to have to continue to develop. The ball got into the second level, and, and it's got to get down on the ground. And, and that probably, if there's one critique, we got to get the ball on the ground when it breaks into the second level. Right now, this feeling you have today after this game, talk about how efficient it was. Put yourself back last year, this spring, this time. How do you feel different? Well, I think they know, uh, you know, how to win games. Like, look, you, you got to play mistake free. We had one penalty, really, with the second group. Um, and, and they understand that, look, the little things matter. And, and I think that they understand how that, at the end of the day, if you can get yourself to the fourth quarter um, with a belief that you're going to win games, you got a chance to win. And so if you eliminate all the the little things, the mistakes, um, self-inflicted wounds, if you will, you got a chance to win football games. Coach, you brought us great weather, entertaining game. We thank you for the hospitality. Yep. Look forward to seeing you in the regular yeah, season. You guys are welcome. We got a crawfish boil after, Ooh. of course. You, you can't you can't have a crawfish boil and, and, and you can't come to a Louisiana right. event and not have a crawfish <laughs> boil. So you guys are certainly welcome. Appreciate it, Coach. I love it. Go. Thank you, Coach. Right, thank you Very much. Thank Appreciate you. it. Tie game. <laughs> I would have went for two. Um, you know, it was uh, what we had hoped it to be in the sense that, um, you know, as you saw, we, we tried to do some situational work uh, and uh, some special teams that uh, allowed us to shorten the format a little bit, you know, because we, as you know, uh, we're, we're thin on the offensive line. And, and um, I told that second group in particular, um, you know, Woodward and, and, uh, and Bush that, that moved over from defense to offense that we wouldn't have been able to have the kind of spring unless they, you know, stepped in and, and moved their positions. And, and they got better for us. So uh, it, it made for a really good uh, spring opportunity for us today because they were, you know, they were competitive and it allowed us to get a lot of guys some work in, in a, a game-like format. So pleased with the, the outcome. Um, first and foremost, we, we got out of it clean. Uh, no injuries, which is always important uh, as, as, as you look at uh, the overall uh, impact of a game like this. And then, and then we, we had some guys step up and make plays. Um, you know, obviously the, the very first offensive possession with, with Lacey uh, being very dynamic with the football in his hands adds to, you know, a mix of receivers that, um, you know, can be obviously very good for us uh, in the SEC. Um, I thought uh, the quarterback was, uh, and Daniels was very efficient, um, you know, played very well. Um, I thought Garrett Nussmeyer equally uh, as efficient and at times doesn't have the same protection uh, that, that Jaden does. And 
um, given those circumstances, you know, you can make the case that he was he, he was uh, equally, if not better, in, in some instances. So pleased with the quarterbacks, um, you know. And again, you know, defensively, you know, you, guys were flashing. You know, obviously Perkins, um, Omar Spate was was outstanding. Um, you know, he he gives us the kind of production that we're looking for. Um, you know, I thought we got, you know, strong play, um, you know, across the board. I think our safety play needs to continue to get better at the second level. We missed some tackles. Uh, but all in all, um, a good day out there today for us to evaluate and, you know, take a take a step forward. So with that, I'll open up to questions. If you have a question, raise your hand. We'll get a mic to you. Uh, yeah, Coach, you mentioned Kyron Lacey. Just um, what did you learn, I guess, a, a little bit about some of these weapons that you're going to be able to really rely on uh, come fall? Yeah, so so Kyron, really, the work that he's been doing is, is much more about, um, you know, consistent approach in practice. And, you know, I think we're starting to see how that's translating to performance. You know, he was... Um, you know, I think at times um, trying to find himself relative to where he fit, and I think he's comfortable in, in where he is in our rotation now, and, and his practice um, uh, work ethic has been consistent, and we can see it in terms of the way he's playing. Uh, you mentioned that the offensive line is a little uh, thin right now, but what did you think of the performance of the new defensive line guys? I thought there were some, you know, really positive things, right? Um, you know, Ovia Agufu is is um, a really good addition, um, certainly. You know, I think he, um, you know, we had, uh, you know, probably a sack on each side uh, against our right tackle and our left tackle. Um, you know, I thought that... Um, you know, we were really clean inside. You know, I thought we, we played, you know, good, fundamentally sound football there. Uh, I mentioned Omar. I thought, you know, his addition is, is going to be really big for us. He made a great tackle in space against a running back. You know, that's that says a little bit about his versatility and what he can do uh, in the box, out of the box. Perkins was really good. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, the plays that, that kind of stand out to me is we ran a counter and he was able to slip the second puller and make a, a TFL play. And that requires training. And uh, he's been really good um, picking those things up. So um, I think all in all, um, you know, the development of Harold at the linebacker position, the addition of, you know, Ovi and, and in particular uh, Omar, those guys have been really big for us. And, um, you know, they were the holes, if you will, that, that we were looking to fill with more mature players. Hey, Coach Kelly right here in the front. Um, Jaden's frame's gotten bigger now. He's up to 205. Yeah. Uh, these numbers are pretty fantastic today, 10 of 11. There's a lot of time from April to September, and I'm sure there's going to be a lot of hype surrounding going into next season. Is, is, is that warranted? Is this going to be a, a major improvement from year one to year two with Jaden at quarterback? You know, we, we think he is uh, committed to being the best quarterback in the country. We've seen that in his work ethic. Um, I think he was on the verge of, of moving in that direction throughout last season. Uh, his play kind of dictated that until he got injured. And uh, I think he's picked up where, where he left off last year, um, physically getting bigger and stronger, um, leading our offense, leading our entire team. He's been a leader. So uh, I don't think there's any reason why not to think he would be, you know, the next version of that. And that means um, not only, uh, you know, uh, one of many good quarterbacks in the SEC, but one of the best quarterbacks in the country. Coach, uh, physically you got to be really good to win this league. Do you think, is it too premature to say after a year that you're there, or do you think you're close? Well, I think we're getting closer to that. I think, you know, clearly the area of concern for us is in depth. Um, you know, we're not at 85 scholarship players yet. Uh, we're below that line. So, 
you know, two or three key injuries puts us in a very difficult position. Um, we should be able in the SEC West to sustain some key injuries to key players. I don't believe we're at that point yet. If we knock on wood, stay injury free uh, and continue to develop, we're going to be fine. But that's not where you want to be in this league. You, you have to, I think, go into a season and expect to lose some key players and still win this league. So I think that's probably our Achilles heel, if you will, is that we're still uh, not at 85 scholarship players, and it's still going to require us to keep this team injury-free. Brian, uh, just what do you make of – all the new cornerbacks that you have this spring, where that competition stands right now as you go into the summer and what you saw out of them today. Yeah, you know, we saw we saw some good things, you know, clearly, but it's work in progress for all of those guys in terms of, you know, where they need to get to for the fall. Um, you know, J.K. and Denver um, and, and Alexander, all three of them are still, you know, in that process for us in terms of, weight room um in terms of the 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 defense itself um and and just a consistency of doing it at a high level they're not there yet we believe they can get there uh we saw glimpses of it today um you know we saw glimpses of of uh Leterrence, you know his play today um so i just think that we're we're not there yet. We think we've got some guys that are capable of playing at a high level, um, but there's still there's still work to be done. Uh, Coach, if I could ask two quick ones. The kicking game, are there some things to sort out there between Ramos and Diver in terms of who's going to kick? And second, is there any chance that John Emery returns to the team and plays this fall? We have not ruled out John Emery um, for returning. I think I've made it pretty clear that that John has a um, a path back, uh, but it's one that is um, really dictated by what he does academically. Um, so, look, we, we have not made any um, misleading statements. We love him, but we're putting academics first and foremost, and uh, he's got to take care of that first. Um, you know, as it relates to the kicking game, it's uh, it's clearly um, not a uh, a position where we've decided on who the starting kicker is. Um, I think Ramos and Divert are still competing, you know, for that kicking position. We saw today that you know both of them had misses, um, so. You know, we have to keep an open mind on it, and, and we still have to keep them competing. Hey, Coach. Uh, with Mac Markway and Greg Penn, what are sort of their statuses? And with Ovi Gofu, how has he sort of improved since the first time you had him? Um, both of those guys have hamstrings. Um, and, and they're – look, I, I think that, you know, could we have gotten away with Greg Penn out there today? Possibly. But – you know, and, and where we're at and the, the progress that he's made, it didn't make much sense for us to, to, to bring him out there today. I think um, Mac is a little behind. He's probably 80%. You know, so both of those guys will be fine. But they were real high hamstrings. They were probably grade twos. So, you know, we have to be a little bit more cautious with them. Um, and the second question was... Uh, a go food is okay. process since you last had him. Oh, 20 pounds, 25 pounds, um, stronger, um, and, and just a lot more football. Like, he hadn't played a lot for me at Notre Dame, and he, he got more playing time at Texas. And then, you know, he has physically developed himself. So you have a mature football player here that has been in, you know, two really good systems, and, and now he comes here, and I think he's ready to break out. Coach, what, what did you think of those, if you got to look at it, those rule changes from yesterday to shorten the game? Well, we worked on them all day today. You know, we, had, we had the running clock. How do we do? Yeah, so we, we were very intentional about it today. Um, yeah, so, look, I mean, I, I think that, 
you know, we're, t- we're talking about, you know, the hope. This is not like, you know, the changes in Major League Baseball where you're going to knock 30 minutes off a game. You know, we're talking about um, the clock running after first downs. But if you really, you know, look at it, I, I don't know that that changes structurally the way you go about doing things, you know. Um, so because they're stopping the clock, you know, in the last two uh, before the half in the game, you know, that still is really where, you know, all the strategy, uh, you know, takes place. If that clock was running in the last two, believe me, there'd be a lot of work going on around here. Um, so, you know, I think it's good for the game. I think if it can speed up the game a little bit, uh, I think that's great. Um, you know, it's when the clock starts running after incomplete passes that you'll have a lot of people worried about how that's going to change the game. Why didn't you go for two? Just to get a, just to get some work on it. It, it. it had no merit to where it would be on the chart. We just wanted to get a, a two-point play conversion in during the scrimmage. Uh, Coach, no red jersey for Ricky Collins today. What yes. was the thought process behind that, and what did you see out of him this y- spring? Y- young quarterbacks, we, we don't want to shut them down early. We want to let them keep playing. Um, so it's always been my philosophy with the younger quarterbacks to let them keep playing instead of shutting the play down early uh, because they're still processing. And so if you let them play, it's, it's in my opinion, it's allowed them to process the game a little bit better instead of shutting it down. Uh, with a red jersey. Coach has time for two more. Chess and then Cobb. Coach, what did you see from oh, from uh, Noah Kane and Trey Holly today? Yeah, Noah is a lot. I, I think he might be the one guy that we might be sleeping on a little bit. We really see a different guy in terms of the way he moves uh, in and out of his breaks. He's a lot smoother. We felt like he was a bit choppy at times last year. Um, we thought that he ran a little too high last year. Um, but he's assignment correct. Um, you can rely on him in pass protections. He's going to catch the ball. Um, that's a pretty good guy to have on your team. And he's really worked hard on some of those physical things that sometimes, you know, you think, well, that he is who he is. Um, but uh, I'm really proud of what his progress um, has shown to our own eyes. And um, that's a good thing. Trey Holly, um, love coaching him. He just, you know, he's got a smile on his face. He loves to play the game. He brings a great energy every day. And, and I think he has, uh, he has things that you can't coach. Like um, sometimes you just got to yell at guys to see things. He sees everything. He's got great natural vision, uh, can see a crease, and those things are, you know, like I said, they're hard to coach. Um, and I don't want to take away any of the credit that Frank Wilson um, should deserve because he's mentored him uh, as a true freshman, as a mid-year, but um, he's done a nice job. Coach, you talked about a uh, second coat of paint a number of times, but how yeah. much of this is about refinement for the guys that you have had now for a year, kind of taking that next step? Yeah, I guess that that would, you know, the analogy would fit them, right? So that second coat of paint is for, you know, both groups, right? That, that, that refinement, right, for those guys that really understand our process so they can begin to refine their, their mental preparation, um, their technical and tactical. And so you're seeing guys like a, a Kyron Lacey that have elevated their game. You're, you're seeing, you know, some of our players that, like a Noah Kane who has really worked hard on his physical development. And then some, some guys that haven't been in this process that are starting to figure it out, right? And so it applies to both those that have been here and those that are, are, are first in this program in, in January. And, so I could I could name guys that that second coat of paint is applying to uh, refinement and understanding what it takes um, to be successful. Thank you. Great, thank you.